What's going on everybody? I'm your host Kyle Robert. Welcome to another Angle Pursuit video here on our YouTube page. With me again, it's Ben Rolf. What's up, Ben? Not much, Kyle. Uh, looking forward to discussing some overvalued running backs. Yeah, there's three guys on your list and we'll jump right in. Uh, the first two guys we'll discuss are PPR. Uh, the, set, the last guy is, you know, all formats. So, uh, Duke Johnson, talk to me about him. Obviously, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that has flashed before. Um, they're talking about using him out of the slot as a receiver, so that gives him a nice little bump. Um, yet, you still think he's a little overvalued going kind of late 8th, early ninth um, per, per, you know, uh, fantasy football calculator. Talk to me about him and kind of why you think he's a little overvalued. It's kind of who he's being drafted ahead of. And it, it, this may just be that some of the ADP I'm looking at has got a little bit of early season bias, a little bit of recent news as cricket. But he's going over LeGarrette Blount and Robert Kelly. He's also above Terence West for me, who um, we, we've talked about before. I, I'd rather have Matt Forte than him. And these are all guys that are going after him. Um, this is in PPR or in standard. I, I'd, I'd definitely rather have those guys. I think they've got more touchdown upside. Him out of the slot would be interesting, I have to say. But... I don't know if he's going to get enough value there as well as is he still going to run the ball enough that's my kind of worry is that what we're going to see happen is we're not quite going to see enough of one thing or the other we're going to see a bit of a bit of a middle ground where nothing's going to really excite i just feel like it's a bit of a wasted pick we've got excited about this guy before and he's just not shown it isaiah crowell is going to be the number one there every time we think duke johnson's going to get his opportunity someone else pops up and takes it away from him I can't see it happening. I'd, I'd rather gamble on the Garrett Brown's touchdown upside. I'd rather gamble on Robert Kelly being what I think Robert Kelly can be. And I'd definitely rather gamble on Terrence West. Yeah, I'm with you on Kelly and West. I'm not with you on Blunt, but um, I, I just I don't know how Blunt fits with that offense. I, I guess what you get when you draft Duke Johnson is you get a, a safe floor on a week-to-week -week basis. You know, I, I'm with you. I think Crowell's the guy. I think he will be the feature back. I think he will get the lion's share of the carries. But... I think there's there's something to like about Duke, but you know where he's going. I think I'm with you. I think I'd rather wait, you know, closer to double digit rounds and get him. If he's sitting there, I'd be fine with him there. But uh, where he's currently going, I just I, I'm probably with you. It's a little little too much to pay. Uh, the next one, I'm 100% with you, and that's the Jets Bilal Powell. Um, everyone's just penciling him in for all these checkdowns and all these dump offs, but. This team is terrible. They're not going to have the ball a ton. They're not going to be in chances to score. And, um, you know, I, I, I just don't get it. Talk to me about some of your, con your concerns with Powell, who's currently going in, like, the fifth round. Honestly, I'm not sure the Jets quarterbacks can even hit a check down. So that, that's an initial concern for me. Um, my kind of concern is that Matt Forte is still there. Matt Forte is very good. Mm -hmm. And I really think that what the Jets may look to do is get um, trade value out of Matt Forte this year. I don't know his contract situation, but it just wouldn't surprise me if they if they look to get Matt Forte running the ball, showing he's still got his old burst, and trying to get a team to come in for him, maybe, be it this season or be it going into the next season. I just don't see what they're going to gain by feeding Bilal Powell, putting a load of miles on Bilal Powell's legs, causing him to take a lot of hits over the middle with these sort of short little dump-off passes. I don't see the benefit here. If they like Bilal Powell and he's got the potential to be what everyone thinks he's going to be, why would they waste him on a year where they're openly, and I mean openly tanking, it feels like. I, they've made no effort to build this roster with any talent for this year. So what is the point in, in Bilal Powell being shot to pieces if they think he's got this talent? And I mean, you've got to take him as the 21st running back off the board in PPR. That is above CJ Anderson, Danny Woodhead, Amir Abdullah, Tevin Coleman, Adrian Peterson, Frank Gore. Like, I'm naming guys that, if not the number one running back, have a much higher ceiling than Bilal Powell. Like, Danny Woodhead, huge ceiling. Tevin Coleman in that offense, and I still think it's going to be an explosive offense in Atlanta, huge ceiling. Um, Frank Gore, absolute safe floor, which I don't think Bilal Powell has week to week. CJ Anderson is going to be the starter there. Amir Abdullah is going to get a big bulk of carries. I just don't see how you can take, with the 59th overall pick, Bilal Powell, a guy who we don't even know the role for right now. We think he's a third down running back. Like, I mean, I know people are paying for like Mark Ingram on the hope that he's going to be more than just a third down running back. But at least we know Mark Ingram has a ton of talent and that Mark Ingram can step in and be an absolute feature back if the guy in front of him gets injured. 
I don't think we know that with Bilal Pal, and I think you're the end of the fifth round, end of the sixth round in ten team leagues. I think that's too much to pay for Bilal Pal. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. I think you know it seems like he he people kind of get caught up in what the player did last and not what the player's done for their career, not what they did all. Like last season, he wasn't that great until the end when he became the guy, and all they did was pepper him with targets. And sure, if they pepper him with targets and let him do that all season long, he'll return that value. But it, that's a big assumption for a guy that we haven't seen do it, and just because he did it over four or five games towards the end of the year where he was great, uh, it, it's hard for me to pay that price. So I'm with you there. The last one on your list, uh, and you are a Patriots fan, so you know this isn't like a, a you know you hate the Patriots, so who cares? Uh, Mike Gillisley overdrafted in all formats. Uh, talk to me about your concern there. There is a real chance there's going to be five running backs on that Patriots team. I mean, you're looking at uh, Brandon Bolden, who's going to be there for his special teams prowess. Like I don't know another team that that quite has as many special team guys make their 53-man roster as the Patriots, but I think Brandon Bolden is likely to be there. Yep. You've got an explosive runner in uh, Dion Lewis. You've got a great pass catcher in James White, who can also run the ball a little bit with a bit of pop. You've got Rex Burkhead, who can handle the short yardage carries. And then you've got Mike Gillisley. And I think Gillisley is going to enter the year as the prob probable number one. He's going to be the goal line back to start the and we saw him running a touchdown for the Patriots in the last preseason game. But I think Dion Lewis and James White are going to do enough where Gillespie is not going to get the role we think. I think Rex Burkhead is going to steal enough goal line touches from him. We know what the Patriots are like. They are going to build some kind of like random offense that is going to is going to just churn away. They're going to do all these kind of things. You're going to Gillespie is going to is going to score you four touchdowns one one week. And then, um, and then go for a wee during a team meeting and lose three weeks worth of touches. Like we've seen this happen before with the Patriots. They don't. They're not committed to any one guy. They go with the hot hand. They play the matchups. And Mike Gillisley, the cost is just a bit too high for me. I've already talked about those guys, Robert Kelly and Terrence West. Why would you gamble in the in in the seventy second pick on Mike Gillisley when you can wait until the ninetieth and the hundredth pick? to get Terrence West and Rob Kelly. I just don't understand it. I want the guys I feel safe in. I do not feel safe in Gillsley. I'd rather gamble on a on a Dion Lewis late in a draft and hope that he's going to give me three or four weeks of production as the New England running back than I would go for a high high pick. That's just that's just how I feel and it comes from years of watching the Patriots um of dealing with that frustration of of cursing at the TV when I when I've seen Dion Lewis in the game instead of LeGarrette Blount in it, with one yard to go at the touch, touchdown line, and, or, and I just don't understand what's going on. And then all of a sudden they'll run some sort of trick play and Dion Lewis will be in the end zone. Like It's just the way the Patriots do it. It's going to frustrate you, and I don't know if that's what you want to be dealing with for your what sixth, seventh, eighth round pick. You just you just don't want to be dealing with that hassle. Yeah, no, I'm 100% with you. Like, I, I like Lou, I like Gillisley. I think there's potential there, obviously. Uh, but people are getting a little aggressive. They're kind of penciling him in for that LeGarrette Blount role. And obviously, he had eight touchdowns as the backup to LaShawn McCoy a season ago. So he's shown the ability to be really productive. He's obviously, uh, you know, a, a valuable runner. Um, but there is a lot of mouths to feed. I, I don't hate the idea of taking him if you have some safety and reliability around him. Because he does have a higher ceiling than most of the other running backs going in his range, um, and, and I know I like him quite a bit, but but there's also some downside. And um, you know, uh, Rex Burkhead is a name that is starting to become more and more appealing to me. I know you know he's another guy, but you get him four, five, six rounds later, um, you know, and, and he still has kind of that same upside, same similar uh, potential of outcomes. And, you know, I, I don't hate that idea either. So uh, I'm a little more bullish on Gillisley, but I definitely can see where you're coming from. Uh, thanks again, Ben, for joining us. Make sure you check out the rest of our videos on our YouTube page. Make sure you're subscribed here. Make sure you go to iTunes and subscribe and rate and review the podcast over there. Five stars. It really does a lot to help us. For Ben Rolf, I'm Kyle Robert, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys next time.